Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, welcome to the course of organic farming. In this course, we will learn what about the different organic pest and disease management option. In organic farming, we cannot allow any type of insecticides which is inorganic in nature. If we see in our agricultural history, maybe before 50 or 100 years back, most of our agriculture were traditional and subsistence type of nature. And farmers used to also control different type of pest and diseases but they have only used different type of traditional method and due to different type of indigenous technique and knowledge they are using for this pest and disease management. Over the years when the human population has increased, we had also produced more and more amount of food. And in the process there are lots of different type of high yielding varieties as well as the hybrids were come. But whenever we have going introduce some new type of crops or maybe some high yielding varieties or hybrids, also that will be infested by different type of insect pest and diseases. And if we see in organic farming, we cannot apply inorganic pesticides to control them. So, there is a need to devise some organic pest and management disease management options in for our organic farming. And in this lecture, I will mainly deal whatever the different type of organic options where we should use for a organic farming practices. So, the aim of agriculture everyone know this is the conservation and optimum utilization of all the natural resources for a reasonably profitability under the guiding factors of sustainability of the farm. And conventional agricultural practice aggravate the pest problem. When you are giving too much of insecticide, pesticide, so there may be some resistance. If you see different type of when we are taking different type of antibiotics in human body, sometimes there is also antibiotic resistance has been developed in the human body. Similarly, in insect paste, there is when are we applying too much insecticides by the nature own process, these insects also defend some type of resistance mechanism. So, there are some adverse effect of this too much application of chemical insecticide and fungicides. And if you see, what about the changes in the, in the world in the last 90 years? And if you see, in case of 1920, 1940, when there is no commercial aggregation as such, our number of total insect pest for rice is 35 and the serious pest is 10. But if you see, now the total insect pest has increased from 35 to 240. Similarly, the serious pest also increased to 10. So, over the years when you are using commercial agriculture and due to the temperature change, some climate change and other effect, number of insects which are attacking for a particular crop, however, maybe number of insects will be very less previously, but now is more. And this is not only for rice. This is for all the crops, wheat, sugarcane, groundnut, mustard, cotton and if we see probably some of the our insect pest which previously was a very minor pest, but now this there is a paradigm shift. This minor pest nowadays making the major pest. So, there is a tremendous challenge in our agriculture how to control the yield loss and in organic farming when your you cannot use any type of this insecticide or fungicide your source is very limited. So, you have to use whatever your natural resources, whatever your cultural may be preventing, mechanical and different other type of practices you have to follow in your farm. If you see whatever the after the weed, weed giving the maximum loss after that if you just combine our case of diseases and insect it is more than 46 percent. So, a huge amount of crop loss is being die this crop and sometimes if we cannot our control this insect pest or diseases, sometimes there may be chance of total crop failure. And we have seen different type of this type of example in our human history. And if you see whatever the different type of we are using different type of fertilizer, state wise production, consumption, pesticides, it also varies from state to state. We are using mostly for India, we are using the insecticide. If you go to the other country in the total global average, mostly herbicide is used. But in India, mostly weeding has done by manual labor or otherwise some mechanical weeding. Our use of herbicide is less. But here we mostly use the insecticide. And whenever you use too much insecticide without following the proper standard protocol, these insecticides come to our food. 
So there is also a human health hazard. And nowadays people want pesticide residue food, they need organic food. So but we cannot give the yield penalty, we cannot make our crop failure. So we have to manage all the available resources in organic farming, how to control effectively this pest and diseases. And if you see in the integrated pest management practices, we are going different methods, our crop rotation, breeding program, trap crops, intercropping, along with it we are amalgating with cultural mechanical control, we are using ferment traps, we are also using biological control and also different type of other things. And all these different type of physical, mechanical, biological and whatever the preventive type of these practices, especially for organic pest and disease management, I will discuss in details in my next few slides. So if you see, what are the challenges of the organic pest management? Maybe for inorganic farming, there are lots of very high quality and very efficient use of insecticide has came in the market. The insecticide and fungicide markets is billions and billions of rupees. But in case of organic farming, we cannot use that molecules or chemicals. So an organic owner, we have to need the understand the pest and beneficial organisms. In our organic farm, whenever we give some type of insecticide, it does not show this pest is harmful for my crop or this pest is the beneficial more by crop. But in organic farming, we always try to promote the population of the beneficial organisms so that they can control the harmful insects. Similarly, there we have to biological, ecological and behavioral knowledge, when time the pest is coming, whatever the pest is giving their eggs and where they are maturing and when they are staying in the weed, other is in the soil. So lots of take care as needed. We have to know the life cycle of the different type of insect pest in our organic farm management. And also we have to the supply of biopesticide and bioagents. So what about the different type of option which we should follow in case of our organic pest and disease management options. If you see, one is cultural, mechanical, physical, biological, botanical, microbial and biorational. So we cannot rely only on the chemical. Our most of the pest management or disease management practices in case of inorganic farming is based on the chemical method. But here we cannot only rely only one type of pest management or disease management options. From the seed, from the soil management, we have to take care of the field. If we cannot control or we have not taken care of these insect pest and diseases at the initial level of our crop growing. So particularly if the damage, if the infestation is too high as a latter part, then organically it will be very tough to control. So always have to take care of these things. So first I just want to what is the different type of cultural practices which we should follow effectively in our organic farm. Tillage. Tillage is a very basic thing. In the summer time when temperature is going 40 degree, 45 degree and sometimes soil temperature may reach up to 50 degree. At that time we do some summer plowing, loss of the insect larvae insect egg, they come into the surface. So due to the lot of sunlight heat, they died. So their population has decreased. Similarly, when we are tilling and other things, these insects also come to the surface and they are attacked by the birds. Deep plowing sometimes grubs of rice weevil, army worm in cereal crops and also pp of the hairy caterpillar. So we can control certain type of pest if we go for the deep plowing because most of these insects bury their eggs or larvae in the deep soil layer. Similarly, planting time is very much important. In case of organic farming, where we have to follow different type of planting. You are going cabbage, cauliflower and coal crops. This is very much preferred under the organic farming. And if you go on the, in the winter season, maybe January, February, December, the insect pest load is already very less. But if are, we are growing this type of coal crops, maybe also other crops, in the time of off season, maybe in the rainy season or in the high summer season, the insect pest will be too much high. So always we have to take care when we are designing our crop calendar in our organic farming, which type of crops we should grow in which time. Always we have to try little bit of oxygen cultivation and if we are trying to do oxygen cultivation for better market price, then we have to efficiently use all the available tools of insect pest and disease management of organic farming in my farm. So early sowing reduce the gall midge, it also reduce the soot fly damage white grey damage in groundnut, mustard feed in brassica and pot borage damage of the chickpea. So for certain crop there is need of early sowing, probably in case of certain case we go for the late sowing. So always we have to take care of nature if we want to reduce our insect pest population in our organic farm, which type of sowing we have to adopt. Seed rate, sometime there is we are allowed with high seed rate, in case of maize borage in maize and sorghum should fly in sorghum because generally the most of these insect also infest in the early stage or in the seedling stage. 
So, if we give some amount of seed, seed rate and population suppose optimum is 50,000, but we are managing a population 80,000, 90,000. So, if there may be damage 20 percent or 30 percent crop due to this attack of the mage borer or sorghum shoot fly, but our plant population will be managed. So, sometime we can use or we can grow some extra plant in my field. Similarly, closure spacing, closure spacing 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter and increase because whenever we grow different type of seeds, especially we have seen in case of rice, if the spacing is too less and crop growth is luxuriant, nitrogen dose is very high, so they attack lot of insect pest. But if our spacing is little bit apart and it is not close, then our insect pest infestation will be low, so that the insect movement or their caterpillar movement to one plant to other plant will be restricted. Similarly, crop rotation is very much important already I have told in my earlier classes also. Rotation of ground nut with non leguminous curves, leaf miner, every year suppose we are growing same type of crops, if you see bacterial weed is very much problem to control in case of brinjal tomato. So, and organically we have very limited option to control this disease. Similarly, there are lots of insect pests which are attacking the crop every year, but if you are growing the same crop over the years, so whatever the causal organisms of that insect pest or maybe diseases, they stay in the soil, otherwise they stay in the nearby area. So, whenever the next crop, same crop they are growing, their population is already there, so their population will be multiplied and anything and there may be chance of total crop failure. So, in this condition always we have to try crop rotation, we have not used same crop year after year. So, crop rotation and crop diversification, these two is very important tool for managing our pest and disease problem in my organic farm. Similarly, intercropping, we have already know intercrop is very much advocated for two years. One, we are doing the intercropping to you produce more yield within the same area. We are using the legume intercorporation for the soil nitrogen fixation through the atmosphere by help of rhizobium in the nodules. Similarly, intercropping is also advocated for reducing the weed problem. Not only this, intercropping sometimes also help to reduce the disease and insect pest resistance. So, if you see tomato intercrop with cabbage inhibit the diamond black moth. So, this diamond black moth is very major problem in case of cabbage. So, one row of cabbage and one row of tomato, it is maximum reduction of diamond black moth and leaf water larvae on the cabbage. Similarly, intercropping of the ground nut with palmillate reduce the incel of threes, jessids and leaf miner. So, these are some these things whenever some plants, whenever some insect, they may be prefer some species, but they will not be so much uh, favored by the other. So, they are having some insect, these plants may be have some insect repellent capacity, so that insect do not want to visit that plant. So, always we have to try to promote this type of cropping system, especially intercropping in our organic farming system. Similarly, there are lots of crop that is called trap cropping. In our farm, we should use some type of different type of crops, which will attract the insect. So, most of the insect population will be on that crop and by that process suppose there is 10 insect and 5 or 6 insects go to the trap case, then only 3 or 4 insect will be remain. So, the causal damage for the our main economic crop will be lost. Similarly, you can see marigold and Nicosiana rastriniana grows a trap cross for the helicopter armigera. This is very important pest of helicopter armigera and they attack lots of pest in crops. So, the trap cropping should be also promoted in our organic farm. Now, Divide as the different type of cultural methods. Now, we will discuss what about the different type of physical control because our chemical option is very much limited in case of organic farming. So, but physical how sun dried, there are lots of paste they are present in the store grain. If you have rice, if you have pulse, if you have wheat, if we see whenever we keep this type of plant in store condition, we see lots of paste is available there. If you keep your rice for one year, and after that when you take the rice out, you see lots of small small insect, these all called the store grain pest. But if we periodically sun dry, maybe after one month or three month or four month, for a full day in the sunlight, lots of this insect pest has been reduced. Similarly, you see refrigeration, sometime we needed use of light, light traps. Whenever you see, in case of especially in the times of Deepavali and this type of month, in the month of October end or also in the November. There is too much when insect is coming towards the lights. So, they this in, insect has a natural tendency to come to the light. So, whenever in our field, sometimes farmers are using some light and in the beside the light they put some water or maybe some kerosene oil. So, whatever the insect is coming, they will be killed by that. So, their population will be reduced. Similarly, whenever we store any seed grain, we have to use this seed for the next year, moisture content should be very less. 
if we could not dry properly and we keep in our gunny bag, then the chances of the insect infestation especially for the stored grain pest will be high. So, always we have to dry carefully and reduce the moisture content may be below 8 percent or 10 percent. Similarly, mechanical, there are a lot some when you are growing a very big farm, probably you cannot pick some instruments or insects by your hand. But in say small organic kitchen garden, a farmer have to visit his farm regularly and he have to create what type of insect is attacking in his field. And there are different type of caterpillar which is visible in eye. So, a farmers can easily hand picking with the help of some plastic or sticks and they can be easily killed. Like rice steam borer, various age of epilacna beetle. Similarly, shaking, sometimes shaking with the plants, most of the beetles has been gone down. And if there is too much water and this way water will be drained, so lots of insect will be go out from your field. Rope dragging, that is done in case of rice worm. We take a very big rope and two person, this is the rice, this will be the our rice plant. So, similarly, one person will, there will be one rope. There will be one human here and one human will be here and they will, they will take this rope along with the field. So, most of the case worm, this insect will fall in the water and whenever draining the water, the insect population will be less. Similarly, bending the trees, in the in case of mango trees, if there is a very big mango, mango tree, a lots of insect will cast especially for the mealy bugs. So, what we have done? We are giving some time of coating with some materials in the stem. So, the insect cannot move. This is also reduced significantly in the mealy bug of mango. Similarly, there are also trenching army worm. These have a very high capacity to invade and they mostly invade in the crop field at the time of the night. So, if we dig some trench around our farm, they could not come into the farm. So, now, is the biological control. How effectively we can use different types of bioorganisms in our farm? The bioorganisms may be some pathogens, may be fungi, they may be some insect and lots of other microorganisms. So, you see lady bird beetle, this is a beneficial insect. What they are helping? They are feeding on some other insect like aphids. This aphids has got tremendous damage in cause of brassicaceae and other families. So, if the ladybird people population will be high, automatically aphid will be controlled. Similarly, there is also Chrysophilus monogeny and also Chrysophila carnia, they are used as a predator. So, they feed different type of insect which are harmful to our agriculture. Immediately, we can use different type of parasitoid. Predator directly eating the insects, white case of parasitoid. There is some eggs, they attack the eggs of the other insect species. There is two type of egg parasite, egg parasite and larva parasite. And I will also tell in the later part, if you see Trichogramma colonies and Trichogramma japonicum at the rate of 1 lakh per hectare at Whitehall, whenever we applied in the field, so they reduce the stem borer and leaf folder in the rice field. So, always we have to promote also this type of bicontral agents and they are, we can purchase from the market, they are very cheap also and also Maillard bug. Reeling of Trichogramma chalonis from 1,25,000 per hectare. They also help a very important post internet borer in sugar pen that is Chylosaccharifacus indicus. So, we have to promote, and there are lots of microorganisms present in the nature, and how far we can use them, but we have to very much have to in our mind that should not attack our crop or other beneficial insects. And if you see, we can also use lots of botanical. Now, lo there are lots of plant derived products which is coming in the market. Neem, a very important tree in our India and uh, for this neem is used for our tradition for thousands of years. And the neem oil, they has a very high insecticidal capacity and we can also use different type of need seed, kernel extract, neem oil, also can use the neem cake. So, this type of botanical we should promote in case of insect pest and diseases. Also, citrus oil and gar garlic barrier is also used, microbial. One of the bacteria, if you see, very much important, this is Bacillus thuringiensis. That is called in short name is Bt, but it is highly effective of control of different pests. Already we have developed different type of Bt genes and transferred in the cotton, and this cotton is less insect pest resistant. But in our organic farming, we cannot use the genetically modified crops. But this Bt protein, this Bt is allowed in the organic farming. So how they use? They use different type of pests: tobacco caterpillar, cabbage caterpillar, hairy caterpillar gram pod borer, cabbage semi looper, brinjal fruit and soot borer. So, and also we have that in case of mage, a recent pest is called in fall army worm, but we can efficiently control with the help of this Bt. 
So, this is a solution we can mix with the water and we can spray also. There are apart from this type of bacteria, there are lots of some virus where it also help our insect pestilence disease management. One of these major important virus is the NPV that is nuclear polyhydrosis virus and second is the granulosis virus GV. And whatever the different type of insects they are attack, this viral they attack and they make colony within the insect body and ultimately kill the insect and reduce their population. Different type of insect is attacked by this Helicobar parmigera, Spodoptera litura and also Spilosoma obliqui and this is very important pest in our crop agricultural crops. So, we can also use different type of virus like NPV and GV in our organic farming system. Similarly, there are lots of fungus is also available for this microbial culture where we can culture artificially in the lab, we can go for the mass production and we can distribute among the farmers for applying in the organic farming and they are well recommended if you see one is very important that is called the Buvaria basiana and Buvaria basiana is highly available it attacked most of the lepidopterian and the coleopteran pest. Similarly, if you see metargium, metargium encephaly, this is also a new one type of microbial herbicides and this is a very highly use of different type of pests, especially we are seeing in case of fall army worm of the mage. So, we can control with the help of this Bivaria basiana and metargium encephaly. Similarly, there is another fungus that is called Verticillium lecati. They also against soft bodies insect pests. So, in our organic farming apart from our physical method, mechanical method, cultural method, we should also promote this type of microbial culture or solution. So, because the whenever we apply this, they will help one each other and they will complement with each other ultimately or have to goal, they can fulfill the reduction of the total insect pest and disease attack in our organic farm. There is also some biorational approach, we can use for, for one is the pheromone. What is the pheromone? This pheromone has, you know from there has some scents they have some order. So, in our farm we see lots of insect is coming, male insect is there, female insect is there. So, whenever they will mate and they will produce lots of seeds or lots of eggs and these eggs will make turn into caterpillar and attack our crops. So, what happened in case of pheromenon, we make a different type of trap and in this trap we put some chemicals of this insect that is artificially synthetic we have done and by probably this has contained the some scents of the female insects. So, all the male insect will come here and they we can collect it and we can kill it. So, whenever this our male population of the insect will be reduced, so they cannot mate with the female. So, female cannot a legs, so our total insect pest attack will be less. Similarly, there are some gossipular for pink bolarum, helicure for America bolium and leucicure for the BSBC and there are different type of insect attractant. One is very important is the methyl eugenol. They are highly used for most of our pheromone crops. So, we can easily use different type of and it is not necessary only 10 or 15 pheromone crop per hectare basis is sufficient. So, they will reduce the insect population by more than 50 to 60 percent and this is totally economically safe. You have not to apply it any type of insecticide. So, we have to always promote this type of some new science and do different type of biorational approaches for our organic farm. There are some interferences there pyrethrum and ejectorectin because whenever we apply suppose neem oil this neem oil has some bitter taste. So, when I apply a spray over the crop, most of the insect they will not prefer the taste of the leaf and they will not attack the crop. So, ultimately our damage of this insect pest will be reduced. Now, bio intensive integrated pest management here in this is more rational for our organic farming where we cannot use any inorganic pesticide or fungicide. So, we have to use understand crop, paste, natural enemy. We have to implement protective measures, I have already what is the different type of preventive measures, clean cultivation, seed should be very good, it should not be infested with insect pest and disease spores and also we have to monitor pest, what are our beneficial organisms, what is our harmful organisms. Similarly, we have to different type of preventive measures, pest and disease management, healthy soil and healthy crops, crop rotation, I have already discussed different types and habitat for the natural enemies of the pest. How insect damage crop? This is a very basic science not all the insect damage the plot in the same way. Some insect may be attack the leaves, some insect may be attack maybe the flowers, some insect may attack all the only fruit, some attack always they are attacking the growing part just like in case of mage, fall army war they attacking the growing part. Similarly, some insects may attack the root of the plant, so ultimately the plants become die. So, always we have to be viewing and chewing, however, they are chewing the plants, some are is sucking, so the sap 
and also the boring. This is the different type of caterpillar, bug, this is called a feed and other instruments. So, we have to know which insect it is and how to control. This is the typical symptom of different type of insect pest and images. You see, this is the caterpillar and they make very big, big hole. So, by the, seeing the symptoms, you can easily identify it, which type of in, insect is this and what is the damage. Some are also they are making the curly in nature, somewhere you see fall army worm. If you can see the whole plant, they are attacking the growing part. So, whenever they feed in the soft tissue, although your maize plant may be live, but you will not produce crop. If it is not producing any crop, then we are not getting any economic product. So, there is crop loss. Similarly, if you see managing insect pet, we have to know mode of dispersal, how they are going, where they are giving the eggs, how the caterpillar is moving, what is the life cycle, they are complete the life cycle within one month or within one year or maybe within one week. So, accordingly, we have to take the care. Or what is the alternative host? Suppose there is one plant is in your crop. So, if there is not that crop, it may grow in the barns, there is some weeds where they can complete the life cycle with this leaf. So, if we know this is alternate host, this weed, so in the barn or periphery area, we should cut and chop off the weeds. So, when are you not getting any alternate host, so your life cycle will not be complete, so population will be decreased. Similarly, there are habitat requirement is there type of damage and economic threshold. Economic threshold is very much important. Suppose in there is an insect, it is not 100 percent necessary to you have to control 100 percent of the insect pest and disease. Suppose there is a minor attack 5 percent, 6 percent and it is using suppose your crop, it making the crop loss maybe 5000 per hectare. But if you apply different type of this pest management practices, your cost is 10,000. So, by giving 10,000 or 10,000 extra cost, how much you are saving only 5000. So, that is not advisable. If the amount of money or labor energy you are using to control the paste and the yield reduction you are controlling the loss more than that amount, then only we should go for the post control different type of methods that is called economically threshold level. So, managing insect pest is very important is the natural enemy. In everything nature there is a balance. One population when they are we are from just increase the population, there are some other insect who will eat it them, so that their balance will be maintained in the ecosystem. But over the agricultural years, every years, we are growing some type of monocropping year after year after year. So, we are disturbing this ecological balance in the nature due to these lots of insect pest and diseases coming. And we have to promote in our organic farming know what are the different type of beneficial insects present in the atmosphere. And these beneficial insect we have to promote so that they can kill the other harmful insect by their own. And there are different type of life cycle we should know. So, apart from this organic seed treatment. In our organic farming you cannot use any chemical things for your seed treatment. So, what is the different type of seed treatment is necessary for organic management? And seed is a very high source of this type of insect pest and diseases. So, if our seed is free from this type of pest and diseases, our chance of contamination in the so, latter part of the field will be less. Similarly, we can also make seed little bit hardy, so that they are not easily attacked by the insect pest. And if you see, in conventional agriculture, it is often treated with chemical fungicide insects, but we cannot use it here. So, choice is very much limited. There are some methods will so one is hot water treatment. If you see in the temperature has killed many type of insect pest and diseases. So, use of hot water treatment they are mostly use the soil seed borne disease. Seed borne disease matlab, there are lots of disease or causal organisms is present within the seed. So, whenever we plant the, this infected seed in our field the next year the infestation will be more. But by soaking the seeds in some hot water, hot water mean not does not more than 100 degree, hot water mean the temperature we can show up to 37 to 8 degree and also 50 degree for 20 minutes. So, whenever we heating the heat up to 50 degree and after cooling after that we can use the seed. So, there are different types of insect pest and disease as diet and this technique probably may not work for all type of seeds. It may not work probably large seeded vegetable seed, but very effective you see rape seed mustard cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, leafy mustard, carrot, tomato and to a lesser degree to lettuce and spinach. So, all we have to also promote this hot water treatment and we have to know for which type of vegetables or which type of crop we should go this hot water treatment. In last slide we have discussed how with the help of hot water we can control some type of insect pest and disease called causal organisms. So, there is another seed treatment that is called biological seed treatment. 
just like whenever we are also promoting growth for rhizobium seed treatment with rhizobium inoculants with the help of jaggery, so that the nitrogen fixation capacity of the soil will be enhanced. Similarly, we can also do seed treatments with some microbial organisms like Kodiak, this is the trade name and what they contain Bacillus subtilis and that is produced by the Bayer Crop Science Company. Similarly, we can have Mycostop, so that they, we are inoculating with the Streptomyces and Varadera T2E2 to planter box where we are using the Trichoderma hejaricum. So, whenever we are different type of inoculating this type of biological seed treatments, so these organisms stick to with the seed and go to the field. So, whenever there will be in the later stage attack by the insect pest or some diseases, they will help to prevent the crop from their infestation. If you see egg parasites, there are different type of these causal organisms which will attack the eggs of the other harmful insect. So, when the egg population of the harmful insect has been destroyed by this type of parasitoid, their population will be decreased. Similarly, one use that is helicoverma control, the trichrogamma, this is very important use commercially egg parasitoid and that is permitted under the organic farming. Similarly, larval parasitoid, here in this condition, they will not attack the egg of the other insect, but they will attack the larva and ultimately the larva will be died and most of the cases these larvae are causing huge damage for our crops that is Cotesia, that is Flavipens is more common in oil rice for leaf holder herby and these female legs 1 to 20 eggs in each host larva. The immature parasites larvae feed inside the hood and larvae emerge from the stages and ultimately they will kill the benef harmful insect. And this is the example, pictorial example of what are different type of parasitoids. One parasite is the stem borer and leaf miner, also is the Cotesia flavices and onto Gphimangla flavonilata, they are also head the stem borer pupae. So, they always attack the larva of the other crops or eggs of the other harmful insect and reduce their population. Similarly, we have also different type of menochilus, sexamuculatus and harmonia octomaculata. So, always we have to try to promote, we have to use this type of innovative whatever the different microbial organisms to use on our organic farm. There are, I have already told, there are lots of beneficial insects present in our ecosystem and if organic farming, we have to promote that. There are, they may not be threat to our crop production, but beneficial of the farmers and under the beneficial insect, there may be directly benefiting. One is we know honeybee. So, there are lots of honey is being produced and you can also produce this honey with the help of this beneficial insect and organically and you can sell a huge money. They also help to the pollination of the crop. Ultimately, without the pollination, many crop does not bearing fruits. So, they are also the beneficial insect also we can give for different type of other lakhs and other beneficial insects. Similarly, they also act as a natural enemy, enemies apart from the pollinator and others. And if you see, there are different type of natural enemies there. Somewhere is the parasitoid when they attack the other insect, either leg or the larva we have already discussed and one is the predator. You see, this is a very important natural enemy and this is called a ladybird beetle. This ladybird beetle always we have to promote this type of beneficial organisms. In case whenever giving insecticide, they all become diet. So, in organic farming, we are promoting this type of cross. Also, green lessering adult is there, sorfreed fly adult is there and also praying mantis. This praying mantis, we know they always search for the prey and they always help to control lots of other insects by eating them. And also you see that this is the dams fly, everywhere you can house in our garden and other things. And this is always, they host different type of, they eat leaf hoppers, plant hoppers, moth and butterflies. And you see, we have to always promote this type of diversification in our system, dragonfly. This is also very common in the rain season, you will see in your garden, in your market, in your area, in your crop field and always we have to promote this type of thing. They are not at all harmful for our agriculture. They are always beneficial. They eat lot of other harmful insect and reduce their population. Now, I have already discussed what is the different type of process how, by which organically we can control different type of insect pest. How we can reduce their population and by the synergistic use of different method we can control and we can go for organic sustainable production. There are lots of also disease. Disease also play a very important role and sometime due to the disease attack of certain crops, there may be 100 percent crop loss is also reported. So, always we have to take care of this disease and in organic farming, we cannot use any fungicide or other things of viral causal organism. So, we have to take care 
of organic management practices for these diseases. So, always prevention is the key. Maintain healthy soil because most of the causal organisms are stay within the soil. So, you have to take care of the soil. Crop rotation already I have told how they are helping to reducing the disease especially for the bacterial wilt. The solanaceous crops should not be grown in the same area year after year. So, you have to change the crop from this tomato or brinjal with some non solanaceous crop so that their causal organism load in the soil will be reduced. Disease resistant variety this is very much important. In case of inorganic farming also we are mainly going for the very high yield because we have lots of insect fungicides or other disease resistance or just materials. But in case of organic farming we cannot use this fungicide or other things. So, we have to take care of, we have to not only take that type of crop which are little bit resistant to diseases, we have also promote that type of varieties. There are lots of varieties nowadays being developed by the breeders in our ICR system and also from the private organization so that the disease attack will be less. When the disease attack will be less, we should always promote that type of varieties to grow in our organic farm. Sanitation always you have to clean your field so that their causal organism will not found alternate host and other things to grow their population and also promote air circulation and protected spray sometime we need a different type of organic materials which are allowed in the organic farming. So, if you see most plant disease cannot be cured once symptoms are appeared one is a systematic leaf call. There is too much problem to control this disease. So, always we have to make our field we have to use very certified good quality seed and other preventive measures so that disease will not appear. Similarly, there are a lot of other pathogens which are also used now one is fungi. Fungi is very important they cause lots of diseases damping of early blight. Bacteria I have already told the bacteria will very much problem for the solanaceous crop black rod is there. There is also different type of viral disease just like for our human they are attacked by different type of fungi maybe some bacteria for you are taking antibiotic for the virus we are taking the vaccine. Similarly, plant body are also attacked by different types of fungi bacteria and virus. One of the very important is the tobacco major is virus, tomato spotted oil you see this is the early blight of this is the early bite and in tomato it is caused by fungi while this is the bacterial wilt this is caused by the bacteria and this is the mosaic virus of tomato which is caused by the virus. So, you have to know because if some disease is attacked by the fungi and you are using for controlling some bacteria then it will not work. So, definitely if you have some viral fever some antibiotic probably will not work. So, always you have to take care in organic farm what type of this disease is all the disease is not same it does not mean there is some disease you go for some spray. So, always you have to know which disease is and what is the causal organism and how to control it. And if you see bio pesticide also may play a major role, but if you see in our inter Indian market in India majority is insecticide followed by fungicide and herbicide by only 4 percent is the bio pesticide total amount is very much less. But organic farming has going tremendous potential that increasing very average growth rate is very high. So, the this bio pesticide nowadays the share has been increased it is little bit old data in 2004 14. So, but this but we have to always make different type of new bio pesticide and lots of entrepreneurs or private companies should also come so that their share will be increased. We have also no different type of trap coping I told we know different type of advantage of the trough cropping, but one of there is some limitation of the trough cropping where we cannot use sometime we have to need additional planning and resources and we have sometimes the farmers also no, do not need. So, there is not only our research is needed, but also effective dissemination whatever the technology has been developed by different research institutes and ICR institutes and state agriculture universities that extension mechanism should be strengthened so that all this knowledge should go to the farmers. There are some different type of botanical pesticide is there and due to different type of this botanical pesticide we also can post harvest losses in the disease production and I mean developing countries. So, there are lots of phytochemicals and these are different type we can produce these phytochemicals from the plant extract and we have to know which type of plant extract can use in our organic farming. And if you see this botanical pesticide have quick action should be target spread broad spectrum actors so that they are all not only used for only one insect if they have a wider host and they can kill lots of other insect then will our purpose will be fulfilled. Similarly, there is different type of botanical pesticide is there which I will discuss one by one once is pyrethrum, one is rotenone, neem I have already discussed, ryana, nicotine and sabdilla. And if you see what was the role they have role in the pest management organic farming can be integrated with biocontrol agents 
and also hazard free ecosystem and farmers friendly. Now, one of the very important this is pyrethrum and that has been derived from the chrysanthemum cinerarifolium. It is a powder dried flower and that is great from the chrysanthemum flower and but they are very much helpful. If you see it has a 6 compound hexane, the active principal compound is present pyrethrin 1, 2, cinerin 1 and 2, jasmolin N12. So, these molecules has a very high capacity to control different types of our causal organisms and we should promote their use in the organic farming. If you see pyrethrin formulation is made from dried flower and to made liquid also you can powder with literal water, you can add little bit so, so that stickiness will be there, only then you can spray or other things in your organic farm. Similarly, the nicotine, you have knows the tobacco. Tobacco industry always we only knowing this tobacco lots of leaves are producing only for the preparation of BD, preparation of cigarette and tobacco different type of chewing tobacco, but they also have some beneficial role. They have some insecticidal properties due to their presence of the nicotine within them. This is an alkaloid from the foliage of the tobacco plant and they have nicotine and nor nicotine present is there and they also can help in different types when we are spraying this type of nicotine or as this leaf, otherwise this leaf extract, they have some insecticidal properties. One is rotenon. Rotenone is also an insecticidal compound and where we are going? We are getting in the roots of dairy species. This root also, the, we are also proving from the rotenone, they are a different type of organic products like dairy soam and they are also very much effective to control different type of insect and paste in case of organic farming. And they also inhibit the cellular respiration and targets nerve and muscle cell, so rapid cessation of feeding. So, whenever the insect stop feeding due to different type of biological or chemical changes within its body due to taking of this rotenone, so they ultimately die. So, their population will be decreased and we can get better crop yield in organic farming. One is Savadilla, it is also seed of the South American lily and they have the active principle of the cavadine type alkaloids. They are also someday toxic to but commercial less than 1 percent, but kills insect immediately or paralyzed but we have to take care of these types of things because sometimes it is also toxic to the mammal. So, always you have to different type of precaution whenever using this type of different type of botanicals or any leaf extract or other extract in your organic farm. One is neem. I have already told one is the very important tree species of India which has a lots of insecticidal properties. You can directly use different type of agar directin present within the neem. You can use as a neem oil, otherwise the neem seed you can simply extract the neem seed kernel extract. And there are a lots of crop where we are promoting this type of neem oil in our agriculture. And the neem pesticide play not only in the pest management, it also exported to various countries due to its safety and efficacy. And agar directin is the main ingredient. Neem oil and seed directors process germicidal and the antibiotic properties and need formulation. How we will make this need formulation? Every time it is not possible to purchase from the market, but you have some neem trees and you have the neem seeds. So, what to do? You simply ground 30 gram neem kernels and 1 liter of water. Leave it overnight for one day, you help it. The next morning, filter the solution, fine cloth, and you can use spray in the afternoon. It is very easy. Simply you have to collect the seeds, you have to make them grinding with the help of pestle and mortar and after that you soak for overnight with 10 liter water and after the screening next day you can apply for your spray. And if you see whatever the different type of recommendation of this neem oil and also the NSKE that is neem seed kernel extract for different type of pest management. For brown plant hopper BPH is a very important paste in case of rice. How we can use neem oil 3 percent, we can also use neem set 5 percent and also apply soil application 25 kilo per hectare. Similarly, for ER head bag, the Leptocorsia acuta, we can apply neem seed kernel extent 5 percent of the soil and also we can use NSKE or neem oil 3 percent. Similarly, bacterial leaf bile, because I have already told they have not only insecticidal properties, they have also the disease prevention that is antibacterial property. You see bacterial leaf blight is a very important disease of rice and very tough to control especially in case of organic farming. But we can use the neem oil 3 percent or 5 percent to control. Now, I am coming to the biocontrol agents. What is the biocontrol agents? When they are some type of the different types of these microorganisms, when they can help to attack the other harmful or insect, and they ultimately reduce their population and they will enhance our 
yield. So, they are very much we should use this type of biocontrol agent in our organic farming. And if you see what are the different type of biocontrol agents? Generally, control of plant pathogen disease and antagonistic microbes like trichoderma, the most popular biocontrol agents used in India. Penicillin we can use, we can use different type of bacillus and pseudomonas, this different type of bacteria present and they always help to control the harmful insect and other diseases. So, always we can use this type of different type of biocontrol agents like trichoderma, penicillium, bacillus and pseudomonas. The era of modern biological control is launched 100 years back. So, introduction of the Vardalika beetle from Australia to California has started this bio. So, sometimes some different type of insect or some different type of this your beetle has been taken from one country to one country to control the population of the other insects. So, why we need the biocontrol agents? Because they are non-toxic to human and mammal, definitely they will not help any health hazard for us, they are not polluting to the environment and very much host specific. So, mean whenever they will die or they will not get any food, they will not attack our beneficial microorganisms or beneficial insect. So, they always should be the host specificities should be there. However, we should be it cannot control alone. If you are only depending on the biological biocontrol method, probably you cannot control all the insect pest and diseases. So, it should be integrated with other control measures and we have to use in the different times and botanicals. How do biocontrol works? They have the mycoparasitism. So, they are attacking different types of insect phase, larva, larva parasitella is there, egg parasitism is there. They also have antibiosis, they have also competition with the nutrient. Ultimately, they can induce the resistance and under this biological control in a holistic approach can help to enhancing our yield and a quality food under organic farming. So, but what about the different attributes that should a successful biocontrol agent should have? Only then it is permitted to use in our agriculture. So, one it must not be pathogenic to plant and animals if it is attacking the other plant or our animals then we cannot use this. The level of pathogen must be high should live linger when we are applying it does not you have to very lengthy period to they survive in the soil. So, that whenever the next population of the insect pest disease will come he can attack. Similarly, they have a rapid reproductive capacity it should be a good competitor should have high survival rate should be lootable for long term storage and also should be compatible with use other agrochemicals. So, if we see what about the different type of biocontrol agents in the market, what is the available and for which crop generally we are recommending this use. One is trichoderma, trichoderma is one of the most important biocontrol agent and the target is rhizoctonia, soft fruit, ornamental crops and food growth crops in greenhouses. Trichoderma different species is hergenium and we are using cucurbit vegetables, flowers, bedding plates. Similarly, trichoderma hazardic in different species, we are using most of the agronomic field and rock crops, alfalfa, forage crops, vegetable, legumes. So, this trichoderma is a very high host range. So, that is why we are always promoting to use this type of biocontrol mainly the trichoderma, trichoderma virians or trichoderma hazicum. So, microbial inoculants are beneficially microorganisms applied to either the soil or the plant in order to improve productivity and crop health. It can help our reduce chemical fertilizer replication. In organic farming, we are not apply this chemical fertilizer replication, but whenever we also promoting some integrated nutrient management where fertilizer con is allowed, we cannot restrict 100 percent. So, that is where also we should promote so that the fertilizer dose of in this cropping system will be reduced. There are different type of formulation is there. Every formulation is not liquid or may be soluble. Some is dry formulation that is weightable fiber some is water dispersible granules the WGG or granule. It also has equally will flowable aqueous suspension. So, for the different type of use different type of crops different type of sprayer we have to use different. So, we have to always to be specific whether we have to use this type of weightable powder or it will be better to use the water dispersible granular. So, whatever the different criteria for this microbial formulation it should tolerate adverse environmental condition it should not be toxic to the crop it should have a good microbial load. You see most of the time we are purchasing from this microbial and if we had not stored well, it should be had 10 to the power 7 this causal organisms per units particularly, but if their population is too much less whenever we apply in the field we are not getting good results. So, always preserve is need and always there is a need of development of small scale industries in location specific every corner of the country. So, that a farmers can easily get with very good quality this type of materials. Now, 
I want to give some example how we can control different type of insect pest for particular diseases. So, in this condition I want to name what very important crop that is in maize is a very important crop and made not only give lots of food to the human, but also major source of feeding material for your poultry industry, pig industry and cattle industry. So, how one species come the fall army war. Three or four years back we have not heard the name in India, it is mostly prevalent in the Africa, but somewhat it came from the Africa to the Karnataka and after that within two years he has been gone every area of India. Now, this pest one of the major pest and it is the most major pest now maize. So, if you see it is migratorian pest and they can fly long distance you can see 100 kilometer per night and 2000 kilometer per lifetime. So, probably this year they has gone from one country to the next country, after the second year you go to the another country, after next year go to the another country like that it has moved from Africa to India and now it is India in is a very major pest. But we are very happy to tell under organic farming also there is some mechanism by which we can control this pest. If it is polyphagous, it is recorded more than 100 host plants, but majorly we are seeing the attack in case of maize cob. So, if you is also graminaceous plants, millet, sorghum, rice, sweet and sugarcane, this is the body, how it is look like. So, there are different type of picture and different type of so, so, whenever you have to know in organic farm, you have given this type of insect, you have to know which insect is this and accordingly you have to devise the organic management practices. Without knowing the insect, you cannot control it. So, this is very much necessary for identification of certain insect and if you see how they are attacked. In the industrial stage in the leaf, they are putting the eggs and small small larva. You will see this type of structure in case of maize plant. And after you see whenever this type of structure you can understand this is the attack of fall army war. This is you can see and ultimately they go inner part of the maize crop. The hole whatever the hole is major where the cob or ear is coming they will attack that plant. And ultimately plant will not be dyed, plant may be live, but it will not produce any economic produce, it will not give any cob yield. So, there will be no economic product and they are very vigorous feeder, they feed like anything. So, we have to control, how to control management practices for organic farming. At we have say action should be taken if the 5 percent plants are damaged, I have already told about the economic session level and whenever it tasseling stage and silking stage, we have to use when there is certain insect population. Deep plowing is very much necessary, so this is hell, I have already told when you are plowing, most of their causal organisms or insect may be larva, the whatever they present in the cell they will come to the surface. So, the bark will be eaten. Similarly, timely sowing is very much important. We are also doing the intercropping. Whenever we are intercropping with some legumes like pigeon pea, black gram, their infestation has been we are reporting the reduce. So, trap crop you can go. We are using also different type of NSKE that is neem, seed, kernel extract or azadiractin. We have also seen whenever we using this type of control along with also we are applying different type of BT. BT is also allowed in our organic farming. So, by mixing maybe two spray of azadiractin and one spray of our BT, we can control this place. Similarly, there are some hand picking is there and destruction because this you can see sometimes what this is very important management practices and there is a lots of science behind it. Use of dry sand in the hole of maize. If you this is your maize plant and this is our hole, this is the growing point, we should apply this area small sand. So, what they will do? Most of these sand particles will be trapped in their body, in their hair and there will be very tough for this insect to movement and to breathe and to feed. So, by this giving dry sand within each maize hole we can control the pest effectively. And whatever the difference thing we can use ferment trap. I have already told ferment trap by we, we are collecting the males so that they cannot mate with the female and population will be decreased due to the less reproductive capacity and less egg. Also, there are different type of biocontrol agents are also being proposed. One is the trichoderma and we can also use there is the telonomus remus 50,000 per hectare weekly interval by seeing how much they are attacking. Now, what is the one of the very important crop also is the tomato. Tomato is a very highly commercial food 
and organic farming always they are fetching very high market. They are not only used giving for everyday cooking, they are also used for the salads, for our sandwiches, for a burger. So, there is lots of export potential of this crop of tomato. And the major insect pest is attacking in tomato is the tomato food borer that is Helicobarpa armigera. It is under the Lophidopteran family, but what the symptoms of damage when you know you go to your field, what is your insect and whenever there will be too much infestation in your field for the tomato, it will be very tough to control. So, from the early stage you have to be care whether there is any attack of this crop because their life cycle is so fast, so that they will attack, they will multiply like anything and they will cover your whole field. So, they prefer feed on the reproductive part of the flowers and fruits, they mostly attack in the flowering and fruiting stage and feeding within the plant. So, they made also the fruits, there are lots of hole will be there and their larvae will be inside the fruit. Say even the plant will not die, but you cannot consume the fruit. Similarly, they leave thrust only their hell inside the fruit, secondary infection also attack. Due to the attack lots of other parasites also attack, they are maybe rotten of the field. So, they are also enhancing the damage. So, how to control? If you see, first this is the insect, they put their mouth inside the tomato plant and feeding. So, this is a very typical example of this tomato fruit borer and if you see this is the adult, they put the eggs, they become larva, larva become the pupa and again, again we come back to the adult and if you see how we will management. One is very important is the intercropping tomato with the African marigold as trap crop. I have already told marigold that is why whenever we grow in tomato, brinjal, this type of crop, we are telling farmer to grow some marigold. It not only enhance the beautification, but also there is some control pest of the insect. Use of pheromone traps, as a direct in one person is very much effective. Also, you can use different type of bicontrol agents like NPV virus and BT, bacillus thuringius, which is permitted under the organic farming to control. You can also release different trichogram or kylonish at the 50,000 eggs per hectare 6 time, so that you can control. So, now I also want one very important disease, because I have mostly gone on for the insect pest. That is ginger very important crop and our northeast India is quality very high quality of the ginger, but if we see our total trade in the world is very less. We have a very less share, but there is enough potential to make this part organic hub, especially for the ginger turmeric and we can sell in export in the market and we can earn revenue of foreign exchange millions and millions of rupees. So, if you see the soft rot is most important disease that is Pythenium aphanidermatum and there is a lots of other Pinethium, Myxotarium, Pinethium, Ultimatum, Pythium, Delicence is present. So, generally its infection start at the collar region, after that is progress the downwards. So, ultimately they will affect your rhizome and there is too much loss due to the, this crops attack and if you see this is the picture whole the fleets become our this is the rot, this plant will be like that and all pure ginger will be unfit for consumption and there will be very less market value. So, what to do? One is very important is the crop rotation. If you every year growing the ginger, ginger and ginger, their causal organism will stay in the soil. So, you have to make rotation. This year you go for ginger, next year you grow for soybean, you can go for groundnut, you can go for cowpea. So, by that matter not only the fertility of the soil enhance, but it also reducing the popular the space attack of the that is disease attack the soft rot. Water stagnation should not be in the field, you have to raise in the raised bed. Similarly, you can treat the seed rhizome with hot water and also you can recommend it to fusarium species, it is associated when then we should go for the hot water treatment. Soil application of neem conch 2 ton per hectare, although 2 ton per hectare is very much costly, so sometimes we cannot apply, but even we can apply up to 500 kilo per hectare that will be good and ginger production is very high 20 ton per hectare and market price is also high. So, sometimes we can use up to 500 kilo per hectare also. You can shoot the rhizome treatment with trichoderma and we can also apply the soil trichoderma, so trichoderma is very prominent role. Similarly, we can also use the disease clumps should be collected and burned. So, that whatever the causal organism is present in the soil that should not spread to the other part. Crop rotation with non host crop, suppose you are cropping this type of ginger. So, next year you if you grow for the maize, you can grow for the upland rice because generally we are not going in the lowland area. So, upland paid your direct seeded price is option. So, if you grow this type of crops definitely you can control this disease and there, there is a very much demand of this certified organic ginger in the international market. Now, it is up to us how we can control these different type of diseases and we can face the market. So, by this different type of package of practices organically, we should not rely on the apply of a one or two method. 
we have to a scientific amalgamation different type of clean sanitation we have to preventive methods crop rotation intercropping crop diversification we can go for different type of mechanical control we have to cultural control there is lots of biological control and also we can apply different type of botanicals so whenever with all these things we are taking care in a holistic approach what about the different type of small small approaches along with our traditional agriculture knowledge along with our scientific our knowledge so we have to make scientific amalgamation of that and by controlling holistically seeing in a farm and adopting this different type of mechanisms we can effectively control different type of insect pest and diseases in organic farming so it is possible very much possible so that our real reduction will be very much minimum or quality of the fruit will be very much high so ultimately then our organic farming will be sustainable and farmers will get a very good amount of profit to go for organic thank you